Hi, Everything Dinosaur here. Collector have introduced a range of new prehistoric animal models for 2024, and they've arrived in stock at Everything Dinosaur. One of the figures is this chap here, the new 1 to 20 scale Collector Diprotodon model in the deluxe range, a scale model of the largest marsupial that ever lived. Let's review this figure and look at some of the beautiful details on this fantastic marsupial replica. After the obligatory request to subscribe, we'll jump straight in. Don't forget to subscribe and to hit that notification button to be part of the conversation. So this is the new Collector Diprotodon model. And the first thing I would say, it's, it's quite a heavy figure which is very appropriate for a replica of the largest marsupial known to science. The model itself measures just over 20 centimetres long from the nose to the tail and it stands about 12 centimetres tall. The declared scale is 1 to 20 and for a representation of a male diprotodon it's about there or thereabouts. If we take a look at the head, the head is in beautiful proportion to the rest of the body and it's a fantastic sculpt with loads of detail. I love the battle scarred ear and if we turn the model over and we look at the teeth in the mouth, which is beautifully painted, we can see that there are three incisors on either side of the upper jaw and then on the lower jaw there are these large single incisors uh, one on the left, one on the right of the lower jaw. And then you've got the premolars and the molars towards the back. I think that's about accurate for the dentition of Diprotodon. And the lower jaw incisors, they're kind of chisel shaped, uh, what is termed scalpiform. And if we look at the nose, the nose is quite wrinkled and there is some suggestions from scholars and academics that uh, Diprotodon had a fairly uh, mobile nose because there's lots of cartilage associated with it and therefore it might have had a trunk, a bit like a, a South American tapir or, or something similar. And one thing I, I will point out about this figure, um, if we look at the underside, uh, well, it, it's clearly a male because it's got all the appropriate plumbing, uh, a penis and testes. I'm not an expert on wombat plumbing, but I guess they're, they're anatomically correct. Um, but the points that I want to make concern the feet. If you look at the figure, um, the toes are turned inwards. And that's classic sort of wombat anatomy. And we've seen trackways uh, recorded in the Australian fossil record of Diprotodon and it shows that it was walking with its toes turned inwards, up to about 130 degrees. So again, congratulations, Collector. That's a really nice detail, which reflects what we know about this giant marsupial. And also, when we look at the toes, there's something else I want to point out. Can you see a deep groove between toes four and five, but there's no groove between toes two and three? You can see the same on this foot as well. There's a deep groove separating most of the toes, but there's nothing between toes two and three. This is because a diprotodon, like wombats and other uh, closely related marsupials, they actually have fused toes on their hind feet. The second and third toe are joined. It's uh, what we call syndactylus. So congratulations, Collector, once again. That's a really nice detail which shows they've researched a wombat anatomy and developed a, a lot of technical detail when they've come to creating their Diprotodon model. If I turn the model this way, can you see a red wound just on the side of the, of, of the cheek there? Uh, that's a, a wound... Uh, which was probably made by a bite from another male diprotodon. Uh, scientists believe that these animals uh, indulged in what we call intraspecific combat. That is that males fought each other, uh, possibly for mates or for territory, or, or maybe for, for social status within the bachelor herd or something like that. And uh, our male diprotodon has been in a recent battle and he's been bitten quite nastily 
on the cheek by a rival. Uh, and I guess that's how he got his torn ear in, in a previous encounter with another male. And in terms of other types of detail on this figure, and, and scars in particular, um, if you can look at the rump, there's a very faint sort of scar just on, on the top of the rump there, on its left side. Um, they are claw marks, uh, one, two, three, four, fairly close together, and then a deep gouge in the leg, uh, quite, a, quite a distance from the other four marks. That is the uh, scar from an attack from a thylacoleo, a, a marsupial lion. Um, it's an old wound. It probably occurred when this diproton was very much younger because scientists believe that thylacoleo, although it's the largest carnivorous marsupial we know, it, it probably could never take on a fully grown adult diprotodon. So it may have attacked juveniles and, and, and babies, but it would never have taken on a guy this big. But uh, our diprotodon, he carries a scar from a Tasmanian lion attack from, uh, from when he was much younger. And one final point, if I may, and, and this is purely speculation on my part. Um, can you see on the rump there are five bands? One, two, three, four, five. Uh, these markings remind me of, of a thylacine, uh, the Tasmanian tiger. Now, you may be aware that there are researchers who are actually currently trying to make the thylacine de-extinct to resurrect the taxon through genetic engineering and the use of surrogates. And perhaps this collector deluxe diprotodon model, it's kind of like a clock. Each band represents five years. And today is 2024, and it has been speculated that within five years, scientists may have created viable thylacine cells in the laboratory. So perhaps this wonderful collector deluxe diprotodon, a model of an extinct marsupial, is kind of like counting down the years to the next um, 2029 when we might have uh, thylacine resurrected, at least in laboratories. So there you have it. Everything Dinosaurs brief review of the new for 2024 collector deluxe diprotodon model. Now we've posted up more information about this figure and the other new figures that have come up from Collector on the Everything Dinosaur blog. I'll put a link to our blog in the video description down below so you can check out more information about these amazing prehistoric animal models and the Collector model collection. I'll also put a link in the video description to the Everything Dinosaur collect a deluxe section of our website so you can peruse the range and perhaps pick up a model or two. On that note, I hope you've enjoyed this short video review. Thank you for watching and one more thing. Thank you.